Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Kate Boyd and I'm a professor of piano at Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm here to help you take your piano playing to the next level. This is the second video in my five-part series on piano technique. The series is about the top five technical issues I work on with my students. And today I'm going to talk about alignment at the piano. This is something I work on at some point with most, if not all, of my students. In a nutshell, alignment is the process of lining up the arm behind each finger as you play it. Alignment refers to the series of micro adjustments you need to make as you prepare to play each note. Our fingers come out of our hand at different angles. They're not parallel to each other. The piano keyboard doesn't run like this. And so using our arm and wrist, we need to make adjustments for each finger as we put the key down. That's what today's video is all about. So again, alignment refers to lining up all of the components of your playing mechanism behind your fingers. When you're thinking about alignment, what you wanna keep in mind is focusing on keeping the finger parallel to the key and the forearm in a smooth line from the finger. You want to avoid sharp angles like this or this. For me, the most helpful way to think about it is the idea that you want to create a big unbroken line from the shoulder all the way into the piano. Think about the arm coming down from the shoulder through the elbow and wrist and into the hand in a gently curving line with no sharp angles and then into the finger which is parallel to the key and acts as an extension of the entire mechanism inside the piano, the piano key, which then goes back into the hammer, which hits the key and the strings, and all of it is parallel, and it's in alignment, and it creates one big efficient mechanism that allows each note to play effectively and cleanly. It's like a train on the tracks. When the engine is pulling, all the cars glide in a straight line, one behind the other. When there's a curve, it's a gentle arc and there aren't any sharp angles between the train cars. We want all the components of the arm to be lined up like a train. It would be incredibly inefficient for the train to try to go down the tracks with all the cars at different angles. Besides being less efficient, the very real danger of playing out of alignment with the wrist at a sideways angle like this or this is that you could become injured because it puts muscles in opposition to one another and creates strain. And so this is where the wrist comes in. The wrist needs to have the flexibility to move laterally from side to side and to adjust the angle of approach of each finger. You need to line up the arm behind the finger. So here's what it looks like when my fingers are properly aligned with the keys. I'm gonna play some of Bach's invention in F major. going to do the same thing but I'm going to like not align my fingers and kind of lock my wrist as a result of not aligning. Okay so this is see my fingers are at an angle they're not parallel right and so I'm gonna gonna play like that now. You're gonna notice even though it's fast that the hands don't move nearly as much so there's a lot less uh, adjusting that's gonna be happening. I don't even enjoy the way that feels. The other way, I felt like I was like light on the keys and I felt like I could, I could go places. And when I do this, it feels like I'm gripping and it's very hard to move around. I'm going to show you in slow motion what that looks like when it's aligned. Every finger is aligned, is parallel to the key. If you look at the overhead camera... Place where it's where it's parallel is the place when it comes when you actually put the key down. 
it's not, it doesn't have to be parallel when it's like before or after it plays. It's possible to play the piano without aligning, but it'll be a lot less efficient. There's gonna be more struggle and it could very well lead to injury. So proper alignment starts with awareness of the hand and the wrist. The wrist isn't just one hinge, but it actually consists of eight bones called carpal bones. The bones, I have here my handy hand model that I borrowed from the anatomy department. The bones here are called carpal bones and they're in two rows of four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carpal bones. This means that the wrist is a complex structure capable of a wide range of movement. So try this with me. Let's move the wrist in three different ways. First of all, I'm gonna hinge at the wrist like this, and I'm moving it in a waving motion. The wrist isn't just a hinge at this point here. There are basically three joints or three hinges here. There's the eight carpal bones, which are all hinging in those two rows of four, and also where they attach to the arm here, and then where they attach to the fingers. And therefore, they sort of move like an armadillo shell, all kind of hinging in tandem with, it, with each other. So in effect, there's those three hinges that are happening in the wrist. And this is super helpful to think about when you're playing the piano, because if you just think about the wrist hinging from this point here, it can be very tight and kind of narrow. But if you think of the wrist as actually being like this long, then it, it creates a kind of lengthening and relaxation throughout the wrist as you hinge, as you move the wrist flexibly. Now the next motion I want to do is keeping the hand flat and moving the hand in, in a motion that's kind of like a windshield wiper. This is the motion we're often going to use when we align the fingers at the piano. And the last motion I want to try together is making circles with the hand around the wrist, which kind of combines both of the previous two motions that we just did. The key to good alignment will involve moving the wrist laterally like this. These, emotion, these motions are going to be incredibly small and you'll just adjust in little tiny ways as you move. Now let's do this with another piece in slow motion. I'm going to show you how to do these micro adjustments as you play. We're going to look at Dr. Gratis Ed Parnassum from Children's Corner Suite. I'm going to look at the right hand alone and I'm going to take it in slow motion. So the first note is you're gonna, so it's this figure, we want. So we're gonna want to move the hand into position for every finger we play. So here's the thumb. Now, see how my second finger is at an angle? I have to adjust as I play it to be parallel, and then that's parallel, and then this. And then I'm gonna go back to the thumb, and then coming around, so everything is parallel when I strike it. Okay, a lot of people will get in one position like this and then they'll play everything at an angle. Okay, so the easy thing to do is look and make sure everything is, is aligned parallel to the keys. It's very important to feel looseness in your wrist while you're doing this. It's possible to line up the hand and arm, but still have a lot of wrist tension. A wrist can be tight or loose inside and look the same from the outside. So you need to sensitize yourself to what a loose wrist feels like and feel the relaxation inside your wrist while playing. So when I'm doing this, I feel a loose wrist inside. I feel loose inside. There's not tension. Now when I tighten up inside, it looks like this, but you can't see the difference. You only see that it moves differently. This has been my introduction to the idea of alignment at the piano. I think this issue is often overlooked in teaching because alignment is a subtle technical issue and until you really understand it, it can almost seem like a picky thing to be concerned about rather than a technical fundamental. Thanks for watching. In my next video, I'm going to continue this discussion of alignment and show you two other things you need to think about with regard to aligning with the keys at the piano. I've made a PDF guide to go with these videos on technique and you can grab it for free by clicking on the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming material. This will also help me as I grow my channel. See you in the next video and happy practicing.